How can we best access and heal the wounded inner child? It seems that it will boycott any lasting change if left behind, throwing us back to square one over and over again. In a way, this is true. I agree. Um, and it is important to heal the inner child. And it's also important to not become too attached to healing the inner child because then you start following courses and classes and workshops. Um, so also realize that you can make some jumps and leave it behind every once in a while. And that's okay too. Sometimes you can give yourself a kick in the butt. You don't always have to be gentle. Sometimes the gentlest thing to do is to get over yourself. However, that being said, yes, I do agree that it cannot be left behind and it cannot just be um, tortured to death. It cannot just be suppressed. It needs to be acknowledged. Agreed. So acknowledgement is the main aspect of healing. It's the first step of any kind of healing. Let's see if I have a good example. Um, well, okay, so man, many people, many people have some kind of a victim story going on inside their consciousness. This is the wounded child that wasn't listened to by mommy or daddy, or it was rejected by mommy or daddy, or it was kicked in the butt by mommy or daddy, or even smacked in the face by mommy or daddy, or even sexually abused by mommy or daddy. And when these experiences happen, especially at an early age, we don't have the mechanisms to cope with it. So in a sense, we're storing this trauma for later on to be dealt with. This is natural as far as natural, as far as these things are natural. This is natural. This is the way it is. So we don't at those, at those levels of our brain development, we don't have the tools. We don't have the consciousness to, in a way, handle those traumatic experiences and channel them and integrate them and heal them and acknowledge them appropriately. So usually what happens is that a few years after they've happened, we start to suppress them. We start to even forget about these things to an extent. And then years later, they start to resurface and they start to cause us more problems than they seemingly did in our teenage years, perhaps. Uh, this is just general speaking. This doesn't apply to everyone in that way. But this is just one example of how this trauma can develop itself. So first it's really intense. We don't have any way to cope with it. Then over a course of several years, we start to just sort of almost forget about it. And sometimes people literally forget about their sexual abuse or otherwise. And they literally at the age of 35, they remember, oh my God, I've been abused by this person or that person when I was at this age. And they actually did not remember for 20 years. This is because we can't cope with it and it doesn't serve us for it to be present to us until we reach a vibrational level of consciousness where we gain the tools to integrate and learn from these experiences. And then these things at the right timing will start to resurface to us. Or even if we did remember them, but vaguely, they start to become more in our face again. We start to feel limited by them in our endeavors. We start to feel hurt by them again. So at these times, the wounded inner child, and also the wounded inner child can be as simple as daddy didn't listen to my plan to save the world. Okay, it doesn't always have to be sexual abuse. We all have different ways of being sensitive and different lessons. Um, so if, if our parents are simply just harsh with us or don't really see us for who we are, that can also be very painful for the inner child. Don't judge the inner child based on like, well, other people are sexually abused and I haven't been, so I should get over myself. Yes, you should. But the way to do that is acknowledgement. It's self-love. Right. It's always self-love. It starts with self-love and it ends with self-love. And in the end, self-love is love for all that is because the self is all that there is. So self-love can take you all the way from start to completion, to infinity. It's the gate. Love is the gate. How do we best access or heal the wounded inner child? Acknowledgement, first of all. <clears throat> If, you, if we take the system of the chakras for a second, and I don't talk about this often, but there is some reality to this. There is reality to these different spectrums of light, of the full spectrum of white light. There is these seven spectrums that we, as an individuation, are emanating, are created out of and as. So experiences are always filtered through first survival, or what you could call the first chakra, then... Um, a personal identity, then uh, our relationship with the world and other people, or the third, um, then through love and, and the expansion of understanding or compassion, then through authentic expression and the emerging of wisdom, then through um, the center of unity and light, 
and then ultimately through universal oneness or seeing the cosmic unity of it all. So every, basically every experience that you encounter, like let's say that someone, this is why people can get scared when you walk around a corner and you're like, Whoa! even if they're really conscious, um, they might still have that initial reaction because it goes so fast that there, there's no time really for it to go through the other chakras yet. So what happens is that the first thing that comes up is survival. So adrenaline kicks in, right? So when someone scares you, this is exactly what happens. You're filtering the experience through the first chakra. And that is so intense that it's so obvious that someone scared you. Now, but this happens all the time. If someone says, I don't really like this cocktail you made for me, something stupid like that. It goes through survival first, then it goes through personal identity, then it goes through who you are in relationship to the other people. And then if all that is acknowledged and accepted and you feel love for self throughout all these stages of the experience being filtered, then it has a chance to enter into the heart stage, which is the green ray or that of unconditional love. Now, this is where the transformation and the healing of separative experiences happens. This is where you start to hook back into your greater self. This is the platform. This is the bridge between the lower self and the higher self. This is the meeting point. Let's say someone says, I don't like this cocktail you made me. The first experience might be like, oh, am I safe? You might not even register this thought, but this happens all the time. Am I safe? Is this okay? Okay, this is okay. I'm safe. Nothing is happening. So you've acknowledged it. You've acknowledged the safety issues and you've healed it through acceptance, through okayness, basically. Ah, yes, it's okay. All right, good. Then it moves on. And this goes quicker than I'm seeing it now, usually in most cases. Unless it's stuck at a certain level, then it will never get to the next stage fully. Because the energy is too distorted to even rise up further. But assuming that, okay, yes, someone didn't like my cocktail that I made for them with great love, but I'm still safe. However, what does this mean about me as a person? What does this mean about my worthiness or maybe my masculinity, my sexuality? I, dude, made this loving cocktail for this girl that I'm courting and she doesn't like this. What does that have to say about me as a personal, as a male, as a sexuality, as, as an individual, as a being? I might start feeling really insecure. I might start feeling guilty or I might start feeling inadequate. Okay, this is usually the second stage. And through that inadequacy, I might, I might suppress my sexuality or I might suppress my passion in some way. I might get blocked there a little bit. Assuming that I'm accepting of that and I realize that, hey, this is their perception, it has nothing to do with me. I can choose to define this in whatever way I see fit. And what do I prefer? I prefer to still feel really confident. I prefer to continue my confidence and not care about the circumstances. Now, this has to be genuine. It cannot be a suppression. You have to really be able to take that energy and transform it into confidence. And by seeing that it's all good, it's all okay. So again, the okayness comes in. Now, if the experience is filtered through the first one and survival is okayed, ah, okay, then it goes to the second one, personal identity, value, self-worth, etc. Ah, it's okay. The threat was an illusion. I see through the illusion. It's okay. So now you've okayed the second stage. Now we'll move on to the third stage. Well, who am I in relationship to other people? What will they think of me? How do I need to fix myself? Um, how can I be a better person? Um, let's see what else. It's basically a more sophisticated sense of the second stage, but it comes with a lot of other people involved. Like, who am I in society's eyes? Um, how have I accomplished this? It's, it's basically the center of what we would perceive as ego. The pinnacle of like a self standing up for itself and, and trying to fix everything and trying to show up in a certain way and trying to distort other people's thoughts of them so they feel better. If it's imbalanced, okay, if it's negatively balanced, so to speak. So, or not balanced, basically. But saying that it comes through that rush of like, oh, what will other people think of me? What do I need to do right now? I feel insecure in relationship to other people. If that is okayed as well, if that is accepted as well, now one finds ease and acceptance with that experience. So basically the th first three chakras are all about okayness, okay? And this is why these teachings are so popular. These sort of self-pitying teachings, at times it can turn into that of, self-acceptance and mindfulness and oh you got to accept yourself don't like try to create good stuff for yourself don't try to envision an amazing planet just like accept what is they are really important 
they are really important. I know I'm speaking in paradoxes, but that's because both are true. Okay, they are really boring at some point, but they do have a crucial foundation that needs to be honored. But they should not be idolized as the highest teachings because they're not. They're the foundation. And in a way, the foundation is the most important. So in that way, they are the highest teachings. But you also need to uh, have the vision big enough to move beyond that at some point. And okay, these experiences, everyday life experiences that get filtered through the lower mind experiences of these lower three chakras or, or centers of consciousness or rays of energy, balance these out. Accept, come to self-acceptance, come to self-love, including the childhood trauma when that gets triggered. And that that is imprinted in those lower chakras, so that will flare up. So if someone says something that you don't like... <gasps> If something traumatic happened as a kid, that trauma will somehow influence the energy distortion at that level and it will reply. It will reply in terms of stress. It will reply in terms of feeling inadequate and like you need to defend yourself. It will reply in terms of feeling endangered and threatened and feeling like perhaps you need to stand up for yourself or flee or run away or be scared. But it, assuming that more and more, more throughout everyday life, you can accept the self and the inner child by finding okayness with these experiences and easing these chakras by <sighs> over and over again, relaxing for two to five seconds and seeing the inherent, innate perfection of light. Everything is light. Everything is love. Trauma is love. Trauma is light. Perpetrators are love. Perpetrators are light. It's all okay. You're safe. You're universally, fundamentally, eternally safe. If you can bring this safety, this feeling, this perspective of safety to those experiences when they get filtered in their initial stages of survival, personal identity, and relationship to others, then that can relax and the foundation can start to become transparent and clear up itself so that now these experiences, the, the energy of any experience can start to actually reach into the center of the heart and be filtered through or understood from or learned from at a level of learning unconditional love, learning expansion. So this is where experiences start to meet the level of the higher self. Acceptance is key for healing. Acknowledgement, okay? Acknowledge it over and over again, relax into it, find the okayness with it, find how it's perfect, unfold it, go into it. All this boring stuff needs to be done. And it's also very beautiful, don't get me wrong. It's really beautiful as well. But it should be seen in perspective. It's the basic foundational work that needs to be done in order for yourself to allow yourself to gain more and more clarity of every single experience in your life. Otherwise, you can only really learn from, say, meditation experiences where you sort of transcend the lower self for a while and you learn from life and you have these expensive experiences of awakening. This is why people have awakening experiences, but it's not integrated. They talk about it like, oh yeah, I had this amazing experience, but they're really still the same messed up, distorted, beautiful distorted vehicle that they are as an individuation. So this is because they have put their filtration system, which naturally comes in that way on hold, they transcended these lower levels for a bit, and they started to perceive from other centers of energy and consciousness. However, it wasn't everyday business. It was a one moment meditation or contemplation experience repeatable and sure meditation can help as well but we need to accept the self fully we need to forgive the self and other self fully in order for these three first chakras to open up to the extent where then our consciousness can become highly adept with every experience of everyday life so now you don't need meditation in the same way anymore unless you want to go even higher but now everyday experiences are learned from, from the levels of unconditional love, authentic expression and wisdom.